come together this morning to commemorate <coughs> two brave pro-democracy activists, Samuel Lount and Peter Matthews, who were hanged here on the morning of April 12, 1838. This uh, public execution, we, the reports are that there were 10,000 people here as witnesses, um, was punishment for their participation in the Upper Canada Rebellion of 1837 and was intended to discourage further dissent against the undemocratic government that was in place at the time. Our presence here 174 years later is testimony to an appreciation that their efforts and sacrifice contributed to the achievement of democracy in Canada today. We are all indebted to them this commemoration is envisioned as an annual event. I'd just like to introduce Peter Carruthers, the former chair of Heritage Toronto. We're very pleased that you could be here. And also Lloyd Johnston, who has come from Beaverton to be with us. Despite Prime Minister Mackenzie King's more or less warm words about his grandfather in 1937, the almost immediate opinion of most who have studied the matter would be that he and William Lyon Mackenzie were at virtually opposite ends of some human spectrum. Far from being any sort of rebel, that is to say, Mackenzie King was an abject, if sometimes artful, compromiser. His most characteristic political slogan arose during the divisive debate on compulsory military service in the Second World War. Conscription if necessary, but not necessarily conscription. This slogan can be and has been applied to many other aspects of political life in Canada. One key thought I hope to leave in the air this morning is that William Lyon Mackenzie had at least a few more things than we might at first think in common with his grandson, William Lyon Mackenzie King. And a rebellion, if necessary, but not necessarily a rebellion, is in fact a rather apt summary of what actually happened in 1837. The ultimate message to us from the honored ghosts of William Lyon Mackenzie, Samuel Lau, Peter Matthews, and all the others in the Upper Canada Rebellion of 1837 is plain enough. In our own ways, suited to our own times, we owe it to them, and more importantly to ourselves, to continue with the ongoing struggle for a more strong and free Canadian democracy than they began. And I must say, no one. Uh, has done this more in his life than Charles Roach, who we're very happy to see, uh, has come uh, in the midst of uh, his, his current difficulties. It's terrific to see you, Charles. I'm glad you could join us, Charles. And uh, Tony O'Donoghue, who is a past city councillor of Toronto, is also here with us. So thanks again, Randall. The first casualty of the rebellion was a family an angry family compact member, Colonel Moody, who fired a warning shot to intimidate the rebels and was then shot himself. While he lay mortally wounded, Lount ensured that he had the best possible care and did his best to send for medical aid. Later, when the rebels were on the march towards the city, Lount dissuaded Mackenzie, who by many accounts was acting rather erratically that day, from burning down the sheriff's house. So in other words, he told him it's inappropriate to be committing an act of vandalism during this political engagement. So that's Lount for you. Hardworking, successful, generous, someone who had the love and respect of his family and his community. And someone who at a crucial point took on the role of pro-democracy activist despite the risks. Now, Peter Matthews. Matthews was a big, powerful man, over six feet tall, who fought in the War of 1812, serving under General Brock. He later settled in the Pickering area and became a successful farmer. He had eight kids, and like Lount, was politically active and a pillar of his community. He was also a reformer and joined the rebellion, bringing many men with him. The assignment he received from Mackenzie 
was to, to lead a division of 60 men and burn down the bridge over the Don River as a diversionary tactic. And this he accomplished. But there were sad hearts in that room, as we heard Samuel Lount's voice, without a quiver in it, give us his last greeting. Be of good courage, boys. I'm not ashamed of anything I have done. I trust in God, and I'm going to die like a man. As they passed fellow prisoners on their way to the scaffold, Lount is reported to have said, We die in a good cause. Canada will yet be free.